Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I do these talks every day called Messages to the Masculine to inspire the feminine heart. And yesterday I celebrated my 400th broadcast. 400th broadcast, say that again. Which means today is number 401, because it ain't stopping. And the topic today is actually inspired by a conversation I was watching two friends of mine have online um, through video, which was uh, my friends Jillian and, um, and Destin. And one of the questions that came up, although it was reframed and I'll mention that in my talk, is about toxic masculinity. And in a way this leads on from yesterday's broadcast. If you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, by the way, number 400, it was about um, how women can feel safe and how men can help that happen. So if you didn't watch that broadcast, I highly recommend you do that. Um, it's funny because I did a talk probably about a year ago now called Don't Be a Dick. And I got the most views, probably because the title was what it was. And it's gonna, it was similar to what this is going to be about, I believe. But this is a much more of a serious conversation because it's not like Don't Be a Dick, which sounds silly, versus Toxic masculinity, which has a lot more weight to it. But I want to break it down a little bit more and provide you one with some clues if you're a woman how to tell if that's a man you're facing two if you're a man to find out if you're offline and what you can do about it ideally that's the plan anyway so toxic masculinity in a simple term and thanks for the, the for the thumbs up and the likes and everything and by the way if you're watching this um on youtube it was originally on facebook live first that's why i'm doing it right now because i'm live <laughs> if you're watching the replay on facebook live then same thing as on youtube you're not seeing me live you're watching the replay and of course, later on, you may be hearing this on my podcast channel, in which case you can't see any of the comments. Okay, I'll tell you more about that at the end. Let's get to the topic, shall we? So toxic masculinity, is it, is, it an, is it an excuse? First of all, I would say maybe rather you were toxic, I would use the word dysfunctional, because that's probably more accurate. And there are plenty of men out there running around, um, how can you say this? Let's just say I've used the term man boy before, man boy. The undeveloped masculine, um, the macho versus masculine, the sleep at the wheel. I've used a lot of terms over the over the last well 400 broadcasts to speak to this, but I want to use that term toxic because it is toxic, in the sense that it's not creating a positive experience. Yes, it's a very heavy word, but for me it has weight because there are many men out there, as has been very much evidenced by the Me Too movement, and by a lot that's happened since then. And also with the fact that, and I mentioned this broadcast last weekend, about how America is the 10th most dangerous country in the world for women, behind Senegal and India and Syria. So that's pretty hefty. Um, that's the top 10 list you don't want to be on, let's put it that way. But America's on it. And I think part of it's because the way men treat women is a problem, and it still is a very much a problem in this country based upon the fact that that's the result that they've found in the survey. To say we live in a rape culture seems so casual and offhand, and it's not. It's a very painful thing to talk about because the fact that men treat women with that much dis disrespect that they don't even, well, that they, they don't even think of them as human is frankly beneath contempt. And it frustrates me to, see, to know that happening. When I hear of so many of my friends and clients who've been through rape in the past, and it's an astoundingly high statistic, it's not like, what do we, how do I fix that? Because inside of me, that's what I want to do, is change it. So this conversation is part of that, maybe. But I want to bring to the table some thoughts about how men have been acting and how they can act, which would change, hopefully, the paradigm of women, what women have been dealing with for the last millennia or more, and we can change the culture once and for all. So that's a big, that's a total order, I know, but let me see if I put some things on the table in this broadcast that may contribute to that conversation, because again, I don't have what, well, I haven't said it again, but I'll say it now. I don't have all the answers, and I made my fair share of mistakes, although I'm very clear I have not raped anybody. Um, yeah, yay for me. But it's more about the fact that, that, that men need to be aware of the fact that respecting women is part of the process of being a man. And let me say that one again, because that one came through clearly. Respecting women is part of the responsibility of being a man. As a, as a default behavior, 
think that is clear. I said that clear enough this time. Some of these things, sometimes these things come through in a very like conflicted and, and confused like box of information I'm going to share, and sometimes it comes straight through like that. And I, that one was one of those. So I hope you get the point of that. It is so fundamental that so many men don't respect women by default. They have to be educated. is a is a sad reflection on this culture, this society that we have. That's true in other countries too. But even, for example, in Italy, where, and I've heard from women, so I'm using them as a reference, not my own experience in that, where they've been um, objectified by men, but it's a flattering modality, if it's even possible, versus over here, which is not done that way. It's objectifying, which is not the same. And so the conversation about toxic masculinity is about how men don't, respect women and I want to speak to some of the things where I think it's causing this I believe we'll see and it's not a pretty conversation I know if this is not ringing your bell and making you happy my apologies it's not meant it's not it's meant, not meant to be one or the other it's meant to be an, an informative I hope inspirational I hope message that would perhaps make your day more positive we'll see so this this we'll see where the talk goes From my own experience, life history, and journey, I've seen many men treat women poorly. And I've come to realize over the years, looking back, that for a lot of those men, it's not so much an educational thing, in a sense, as it is a, well, it is educational, but it's a sense, it's, it's triggered a lot of times by men feeling inferior, as strange as this is gonna sound. I talked about this last week, um, Saturday I think it was, so a week ago, yes, and I talked about this piece that, that, that really was actually an epiphany thanks to one of my friends who commented on one of my broadcasts and said, talk about this, which is that the reason why a lot of men are um, putting women down, energetically speaking, is because men are afraid that women will be stronger than them but they're not willing to admit it themselves or anybody else. And it's a powerful, when I, read, when I said that, and when I was sitting with that, it came to as a powerful truth, is that women, and I've said this before in several broadcasts, are way more powerful than men are. And I don't mean physically like strength, because that's where men, the one place where men are generally stronger is in that place. But when it comes to emotions and the other things that women deal with in life, you're way stronger than men are. And I'll be first to admit that. And I think for a lot of men who think they're top of the world and kings of the castle, think somehow that if that women claim that power back and take back their strength, that they would lose to that. And men are scared of that, uh, and you know, justifiably so in a sense, because men have suddenly got their um, very um, shaky throne, which is a very unstable throne, get shaken, which is which is unfortunate. And part of this wiring piece is that men have never learnt, largely speaking, because a lot of us are waking up to this, to raise our own um, understanding of what women are about, what we are about as men, and how we can relate in a way that is autonomous, equal, and respectful, because that's what's missing. And this toxic masculinity largely is about control and demeaning of other men and other women. So it's not just not just women only, it's men as well. And so a lot, of, a lot of the challenge for us as men is to face each other men to man to man from a place of authenticity and vulnerability. And it's something that Julie mentioned in the broadcast that I was talking about. How, actually, I think no, maybe Destin did. One of the two did. We'll see. I don't remember which one it was. But speaking to how, for us men, to be absolutely... Um, vulnerable for some men is actually a emotional impossibility in the sense that they are not even available to this aware of it or even, or even open to it because the frustration they face which is sorry excuse me the the no frustration that's not all right what i was looking for the demons that they face if they were to get, get vulnerable are too overwhelming for them to face them because of their own past culture whatever that is and so in this way of life, men have chosen, largely speaking, again, not everybody, to lock down the hatches, to protect themselves from any emotional um, 
nudity, nakedness, being that transparent, as it were. Now, I've talked about this recently about how being transparent is the way we are, the way through for us is to grow through that. So, for some men, it is wiring that has limited them from being able to function well. For other men, it's made them very successful. So, there's a whole range and a gamut of how men deal with life carrying this weight around of not being able to be free, to be safe, to be comfortable with women, not to trust them, and not to be in fear of them. Because, frankly, ladies, more men should be scared of you. And I mean from a healthy place. Because you, you've, you've been dealt a bad hand, to we say, we say, over the last century or so. So, for me, the challenge with toxic masculinity is that men don't seem to notice that they're not even, that they're being toxic in a way. I mean, toxic in the way that there's no respect, that it's negative um, expression, and it's, um, and it's a very limiting way of being. Hi, Michelle, nice to see you in my broadcast. So in this, this evolution that we're going through, and I feel we are going through an evolution, that women are moving faster than men are. Oh yeah. And that what's happening for the men who are stuck in that, that limited um, macho man boy toxic masculinity way of being, gonna get left behind. So this is a clarion call, if it were, or a, or a yell to the men saying, dudes, it's time to wake up. It's time to take back your hearts, time to take back your truth, and to step into a place of being equals to women in the sense of having equal standing with women. We're not, not the same, so it's different. But also from a place of vulnerability, which a lot of men have been shit scared of. But by doing so, we'll grow. And by growing, we become equal partners. And by becoming equal partners, then we can honor and respect women as they deserve. Because we need to do that. It's one of the things that's really missing for me, frankly. One of my, one of my frustrations with this is to see women take this from men, this disrespect, this negativity, and, and not stand for the truth. Now, for some women, they are in fear of their safety. I know I've seen women in relationships who have had some real challenges from their male partners because the threat of violence was too strong. Now, unfortunately, I can't speak to that transparency in the sense that what I'm talking about is people who can, can actually take their, their space, their, their, um, their power back in the sense. Sometimes it requires a much bigger intervention when it's that sort of um, danger in the sense. So I'm speaking to more about those of you who have been defaulting to putting up with crappy behavior from men. Ladies, it's time to stop doing that. As crazy as it sounds, because you may not have been realizing you've been doing it, but it's time to say no. And as I remember a post recently on Facebook I saw, which I've seen many times is, no is a complete sentence. And it's a powerful one to use when you're not getting what you want from your man. And when men don't respect you and appreciate you, you can say no to them. And most men, most men, not all men unfortunately, but most men, will tend, if they don't get what they want, and I'm gonna out some men with this, will collapse like a house of cards. Because their egos aren't, are, are very thin glass shells. And so their attachment to being right fuels them, but if they get caught and made wrong, they collapse. So some of those men are very, um, what's the word, are braggadocious? where they think they can be so tough, brigand, like, you know, getting things done. But their egos are this thin. And so, ladies, it's okay to be strong with them. You have the power, you have the right, you have the authority. So take care of yourself. Absolutely. Done deal. Given. But a lot of you women aren't doing that. And a lot of men have to learn how to be respect and honoring of women. But that's a piece that's missing. So... I'm just thinking if anyone want to add to this because I'm feeling myself like putting questions on the table but not having solutions beyond the overarching ideas. So I'm just giving this some ideas because this is, this is a weekend broadcast, by the way, so they're usually not as deep as this. Um, but after yesterday's broadcast, this is a heavier one than then, although it's a shorter one than then. So, so again, if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, by the way, which is number 400, that was a milestone, that was talking about, about women and safety, which this is kind of spinning off from and... and being a PS4 in a way. At the same time, for men watching this, 
if you're someone who is waking up, who is awoke as it, who is awakened as it were, and is seeing the world through a clearer eyes and seeing women as women to respect, you got two things to do. One is to do that, respect the women around you, all the women around you, including relatives, neighbors, um, partners, everyone. The second thing is to spread the message for other men, because the challenge for us men now, when we're awake, or I should say, one of the, one of the things we can we do is we tend to go, well, I'm awake, but they're not. And so they keep doing their stuff to women, which is negative, and we're not doing anything about it. So my invitation, my challenge, my throwing down the gauntlet, as it were, for other men who are watching this, is to stand up for women around other men too. Be willing to say to other men, that's not cool. To indicate to them that women deserve better. Because my talks alone, if women to know it is great, but the more we men to educate other men as well, the better we're going to be. And I don't, I'm, I think that's really what I want to get a message out. I'm just, just sitting with it if there's any more to come, because this is one of those broadcasts that was just, as always, unscripted. There may be more to this topic, I'm not sure. So if you have questions about this or thoughts about this, please put in the comments below when I sign up and respond to them. This is my daily broadcast. Um, every, time, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I just get online and do my Facebook Live. This is number 401 in an ongoing series of talks. Yes, 401. Uh, that live on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. And the playlist is Messages to the Masculine. And also starting to grow my audience on iTunes. If you want to listen to my broadcast, I've got about 25 of them up there so far. I'll be adding them over the next few months. And if you go to iTunes and look for Messages from the Masculine, you'll find my playlist there. Uh, my podcast, that is. So I hope you can find them and enjoy them. Um, I think that's it. If you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, again, I do highly recommend you watch it. It was a longer talk and a deeper talk about women and safety. It was a, it was, that was an important one too. So hopefully this makes some sense. This, this has made some sense to you and perhaps give you some ideas and thoughts about how you can change your direction in the future. Um, with that, I think I'm complete. I will see you again tomorrow with a different topic, I'm sure. And uh, if you have any questions again about this one, please put them below and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.